Hello, friends. Today's episode of Sleep with the Lights On, we take a peek behind the curtain into the lives of realtors and real estate agents that wanted nothing more than to find their client's dream home, but were met with something more sinister than they ever could have imagined. From a waterfront property haunted by a spectral soiree to a Nashville bungalow ensnared by an unseen presence, these realtors learned the hard way that long after the doors to an open house are closed, sometimes something sinister lingers. In abandoned homes and historic dwellings alike, echoes of the past guide unsuspecting home buyers on a journey fraught with uncertainty. And this is where our story begins. We'll see you on the inside. Folks, welcome back to Sleep With The Lights On. As you heard in that opening monologue, we are diving into terrifying true tales from real estate agents and realtors alike. And if you are a fan of these kinds of stories, check out the companion episode of our podcast, The Freaky Deaky, episode 190, For Sale, Not Haunted. Yeah, so go check out the podcast wherever you get your podcasts, episode 190, as well as I believe episode 151 was also For Sale, Not Haunted, but I... Could be off on that. How about you just type it into the computer or your phone? And there you have it. That is not why you're here. Christian, how are you doing today? I am wonderful. On the edge of apocalypse. Ah, uh, yes. That makes no sense. Well, nothing it's, it's, we do makes sense these it, days. It's it, fine. It's a coded message. If you understand, you understand. Probably something about a TV show you're watching. Maybe. That's a yes. As always, my name is Scott, joined by the world's wettest blanket, my father-in-law, Christian. And now that all that fun stuff's out of the way, let's dive into this first story, shall we? It's been a couple weeks since we recorded. We had to take a bit of a, a break with Sleep With The Lights On just to get caught up on everything else. And, and now it feels like we've never done this before. So that's what happens when you take breaks in life, apparently. So yippee, yippee for that. Anyway, as I mentioned in the podcast episode itself, uh, I did save some of the best stories for this episode of Sleep With The Lights On, so you're in for a real treat. And this first one is called Party in the Basement, and it's by Terry Herrera, who is a realtor with Windermere Bellevue West. Wow. Mm, prestigious. If you're in the area, look, look up Terry. Look her up. It goes, I was showing a new client a waterfront property on Lake Sammamish. It was a two-story home with a daylight basement and a lovely lawn out to the lake. I was showing my client around the main floor of the home, chatting up the cabinets in the kitchen when all of a sudden, we started hearing a piano playing from the basement level. My client and I glanced at each other thinking that was a bit strange. Soon after the piano started playing, we could hear voices, men and women laughing and talking, and we could hear the shuffling of feet dancing across the hardwood floors down below. At that point, I walked over to the window facing the lake, fully expecting to see that there must have been some sort of party going on back there and everybody had decided to come in. But when I looked outside, there was no evidence of anyone having been in the backyard. I said to my client, I definitely had an appointment. I'm surprised they forgot we were coming. I walked over to the door leading to the lower level. I opened the door and saw a staircase with a second door at the bottom of the staircase also closed. When I opened the door, the sound of voices and the piano music amplified. We could distinctly hear men's and women's voices and could almost make out conversations. I yelled down the stairs, Realtor! But the party continued. I walked to the halfway point down the staircase and again yelled out, Realtor! At that moment, everything went dead quiet. I looked back up the staircase to my client and quietly mouthed, Whoa, that's weird. She nodded affirmatively. I continued down to the end of the staircase and opened the door. Just inside the door was a small table with a vintage clock ticking away. I stepped into what appeared to be an elderly person's apartment and there, tucked around the corner, I saw it. A piano. But there was absolutely nobody down there. I ran back up the stairs, nearly knocking my client over and ran for the door. She, not knowing what I had seen, was right at my heels. We drove off as quickly as we could, realizing I had not locked the door. I called the listing agent to inform her of the door and our experience. 
She gasped and said, Oh my gosh, Terry. The owner's mother-in-law lived down there and she passed three days ago. Well, she was having one hell of a party there today, I told her. Those are always fun stories. Where it's like, I've heard, you know how many like weird stories I've heard of parties going on? And then as soon as people investigate, it just stops. It's like the ghosts are having just a shindig and they're like, oh, shh. It's uh, better than what we normally get from these hauntings where it's a, a, a tragic, a tragic demon. But also, no, it's like a tragedy and printed in time. Yeah. This time it's a party. Now that's something you wouldn't mind in the afterlife is just a nonstop party. Well, maybe you get it's, tired of it. It all seems, well, knows? seems like a good idea, but then... Sometimes you remember back to when you were younger and life was a nonstop party and how exhausted you were. Good old yeah, days. Yeah, we definitely think back to those times, too. So. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I don't know. I man. actually never really liked to party, to be honest with you. I, I went to a few, but it was always just like a weird environment, you know? You're kind of antisocial, though, too. Yeah, exactly. I was homeschooled from like sixth grade on. So I'd show up at a party and people like, I can't believe Scott's here. And then they'd hang out with me. And after like 20 minutes, I'm like, I really want to go home. This does not. It's just people playing beer pong and smoking weed. I can do that at home, minus the beer pong and something fun, you know? I don't know. If, I don't know what to tell you, man. I know. I really missed out on a lot of fun times, I'm sure. But looking at the people that were at those parties now, I think... Do any of them have a spooky ghost show on YouTube? I don't think they do, friends, and that's why I win. At least that's why I tell myself that. Anyway, who cares? What What do you guys think of that story? Comment down below. I get a shining vibe from it. It does kind of have that vibe to it. Without Jack being taken by the hotel, this one is just like... They got out. They were smart. And that's when they're like, what's that? No, I'm leaving now. Yeah. And it was funny, though, to see them both go running out of the house. That Could you imagine being a neighbor? Yeah, just, well, they're showing the house again, Mabel. And then five minutes later, the two people come running out and speeding away. Like, like, well, that can't be a good sign. Now, what is weird is that, I mean, I understand why she did it, but, like, you know, the realtor runs out, and then the person is just following her. No context whatsoever. Yeah. Just, like, breezes right by you then you're chasing right on our heels like why are we both running i wonder makes uh, sense also if you're near the end of life and you know how to use a portable speaker set it up to go off like three or four days after you're you've left this plane yeah and just so everybody has a story it's me from the beyond well, but, be yeah, especially since some there are some beliefs that you still exist in the afterlife as long as people remember you I think I've heard that. That's paraphrasing it, but... Yeah, it is along those lines, though. Like, you never really die as long as people remember or tell your story. Or... Which explains bad guys in histories. They're like, I don't care. I'm going to live forever because everybody will speak my name. There you go. Speak my name. Sounds like a Beyonce song. Beyonce, the great value Walmart version. Actually, Beyonce in and of herself is a great value Walmart version. Yeah, that's right. I said it. She sucks. Isn't speak my name a movie? I don't know. Say my name is a song, though. I'm not even sure if it's Beyonce. I think we should put a ring on it. We'll put a pin in it, put a ring on it for later. Anyway, this next one is called A Warm Welcome, and it's by Anna Antic, a realtor with Remax in Nashville, Tennessee. Might have to look up Anna Antic myself. I don't know if I want to go to Nashville. Okay, it says, I have had quite a few unexplained experiences showing properties, but here's my weirdest one. I was out with some first-time home buyers who were newer to the process, so I didn't know them super well yet. We had looked at three or four properties already and were headed into our last home, which was a 1930s bungalow. In Nashville, it's very common to show properties that have framed gold records up on the walls, and I like to try to see if I can figure out who the owner is from the awards they have won. After I'd gone through the house with my buyers, I went over to look at the gold records in the hallway so they could take a second look around and discuss. As I was standing in the hallway perusing the records, my throat started to get really scratchy, and then I started to feel wheezy and short of breath. I casually yelled to the buyers, hey guys, do you see a cat in here anywhere? I feel like I'm having an allergy attack. It's mold. There you go. It's a lot worse than mold. Spoilers. 
Not spoilers at all, I promise. Uh, it got bad enough that I was thinking about stepping outside when the husband rounded the corner, took one look at me, and very curtly said, We have to go now. And I mean now. So we hustled out, and it was awkward because I wasn't sure if I'd said something or done something that upset him. Later that evening, the wife calls me and is kind of sheepish. I immediately reassured her that I was glad she called and welcomed feedback if there was something I could do differently to make her husband more comfortable. She hemmed and hawed for a second and then said, Anna, you are probably going to think we are crazy, but when John rounded the corner today, he saw something behind you and it was squeezing your neck. I still sold them a house, but definitely not that house. John was fantasizing. That's huh? creepy. What? What? Not on this show, man. <laughs> we, we don't go down that road on this show. Oof. Can you imagine us being, um, is there a cat in here? And then just, <laughs> John rounds the corner, like, oh, goodness. Oh, no, we got to go. We got to go right now. I would lose my mind. I wouldn't just be like, call me, like, excuse me, we have to leave right now. I would literally be like, bah! I just like dash out of the house or like try to punch it on my way out. You know, be something somewhat chivalrous. Yeah. John, John's old school. He has to try to mm. keep everybody calm while he saves them. Excuse me. There's a demon squeezing your neck. We must leave now. Mm. So I was right. It was mold. It's like an, mm. a mold induced psychosis where everybody sees something or feels something. There's an ocean between those two points. Okay. How about this? The wife is kind of demonic mm. because she's the only one that didn't experience it. Just the husband and the real estate agent. Not entirely sure that's how that works. Um, they had a special moment between themselves. Like, hey, remember that time when a demon was squeezing my throat and, and you witnessed it and you saved my life. I love you, John. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know if that's the case, really, to be honest with you. But terrifying all the same. The real estate agent and John didn't get the house. The wife did demons. Wow. Well, that's one way of looking at it. And if you're a fan of looking at things incorrectly, that's the route you want to take right there. The real reason, I mean, honestly, who knows? Who knows? Something creepy going on in that house. Like, don't give me one. Don't give my house away. Slap her around. What if it was like when we have something like this where somebody feels like they're being choked? Mm. Let's just say it's not anything paranormal. If it was mental, that's like scary nuts if your brain could make you feel like you were being choked choked yeah and and you don't want scary nuts trust me <laughs> yeah. that's where just normal nuts yeah, yeah normal just normal nut. nuts is where we're at scary nuts is a bit too extreme for our liking i wonder if anyone's had experience like i had that one experience where i was being choked in a dream and woke up and was still being choked by whatever it was that jumped on me but i had a dream a shark bit off my arm and I woke up and I was just sleeping just on. on it. Classic, classic stuff. Yeah. So I know like in the dream space, you know, there's some stuff that can go. But like if you're just like out and about and you're like, oh, there's a little tickle in my throat. Is there cats nearby? And I'm nope, just some demon trying to choke you out. I don't know. Anyone have experiences like that? I'm sure there's someone out there, whether or not they're on our YouTube, that is entirely up for speculation. But that's why I ask. Sound off in the comments if that sounds like something you're familiar with. Or if you have uh, theories of your own that maybe are better than Christian's. And hey, spoiler alert on that, most of them are. So if you got to go. If you're a ghost and want to tell us the truth, you know how to reach us. Through social media, please. Oh, yeah. not, not through the ways of Not science. personal, you know, experiences yet. We'll get to know us first. Yeah. Anyway, that's a fun story, though. I really like that one. Let me get back into this definite book and hope that I don't show the screen. My book screen, you know the ones. Anyway, this final story of today's episode is called Enjoy the View, and it is by Justin Fox, who is the broker and owner of Remax Professionals. Hey, Justin, look at you. This is a very fascinating uh, experience, actually, having these people like, this is me, instead of this is my fake name on yeah. Reddit. Yeah, this is Tiddlywinks1851, cat turd. Yeah. Okay, anyway, about this super serious story we're about to get into. Uh, anyway, Justin says, back in the foreclosure crisis of uh, 2008. Oh, those days, man. Good times, yeah, I was a ripe young lad. Almost everything I showed was a foreclosure, so vacant homes and odd sites were the norm. I was working with a young couple who fell in love with the online listing 
of a quirky foreclosed home built in the 1870s. Hey, rule number one, do not fall in love with houses, quirky or otherwise, from the 1870s. You're asking for trouble. Okay. I didn't, didn't know you could call something from the 1870s quirky. Dilapidated is usually the, the term that's thrown around. It was one of Minnesota's seven historic military wagon roads dating back to the 1850s, with just over an acre overlooking a small lake. As we walked up, dodging overgrown trees and wading through tall weeds, the home clearly needed some love. Some of the improvements led us to believe the former inhabitants were a bit quirky. Hey, look at that, twice in one story. But we weren't dissuaded. Exploring the labyrinth of a house, we climbed down a makeshift ladder. Wait a second. I didn't know you could have, like, a labyrinth of a house and still be quirky. Twice quirky. I mean, you know what? Labyrinths are uh, a bit of a conundrum in the housing market, oh. it seems. What are the, all these crazy words we're using? Well, quirky, conundrum, labyrinth. Basement. Climbed. A. Wow, it just keeps getting weirder and weirder. Dank limestone basement, no oh. less. Yeah. So, so, the, so they, the people this, back in the old days got folks. high down there. Mm. So dank. It was so dank. Anyway, we climbed down a makeshift ladder into the dank limestone basement. Bruh. Do you think? And, you... I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. But... Please continue. <laughs> now, let me put this story down for a moment. Do I think what? I'm, I'm just imagining the person telling the story doesn't think of dank in the same way I do. Yeah, like they heard their kids saying or something. Like Justin <laughs> heard his kids saying, he's like, oh, is that what's in right now? Yeah, so anyway, this dank limestone basement, huh? And people are like... The teenagers are like, does, does dad get high? <laughs> Sorry. What the hell, dad? Sorry, Justin, not to smear your name all over their YouTube and a spooky ghost show. Let's continue. We climbed down a makeshift ladder into the dank limestone basement, and as we climbed back out... We heard a loud thump from the front of the home in an area we hadn't yet been to. We headed across the uneven floors toward the source of the noise and found a bird had flown into the living room picture window and lay twitching on the ground outside it. This is Never the beginning of a horror, horror mm -hmm. film. Yeah, somewhere Alfred Hitchcock is getting aroused. The new omen. Yeah. Anyway, uh, par for the course, given the location and nature, we told ourselves, although at this point, we all had an odd feeling creeping over us. We proceeded up the steep, narrow stairs to the home's second story to check out the bedrooms. The primary bedroom had a small private balcony overlooking the lake, which we all agreed was our next destination. I opened the old wooden screen door for the buyers and noted that the only lock was an old fisheye hook latch. I've been locked out before, so I always check this. Holding the door for the buyers, I stepped out last and softly shut the door behind us. We stood on the balcony for a few minutes, taking in the view, and as I turned to open the door, it was locked. The hook was in the eye hole, and we were locked out on this three foot by five foot second story balcony. I rattled the door a few times to see if it would pop out, but ultimately had to cut the screen to free us. Once inside, the buyers headed back down to leave. I stayed at the door for a few minutes, trying to slap the door shut so that the hook would lock and could not do it. The buyers ultimately decided there were unseen forces telling them this wasn't their home and they didn't buy. To this day, every time I drive by the house, I always wonder if the current owners have any odd experiences. Hmm. And that's just a hilarious ghost waits for you to go outside and just like, that's not, the type not of, today. Yeah, that's what I would do. I would do harmless yeah. stuff that's just like... Nothing like overly haunting. You're like, I'm just going to lock you outside of my house because this is my space. I would also tell the little kids of the parents inhabiting my haunted dwelling that they could have candy. You just tell them where the, all the food's hidden. Yep. Like they have uh, Snickers bars hidden under their pillowcases. They're I'd a walk, little melty, but it's I, fine. I'd walk by and hit the child lock on the, on the cabinet with all the snacks. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and cut everything after child and just be shocked and be like, you're going to hit the child, Christian? That's pretty messed up. That is unacceptable. Can you believe this guy? No. That would be fun, though. That would be some clickbait stuff for YouTube, for sure, that would most likely propel us into a direction that we had uh, no business going. But no. it's fine, honestly. I would turn on toys constantly. That's usually the scariest thing you can do, actually. So many like haunted houses and stuff, like 
or anytime there's people on like these discovery shows or whatever being like my i was possessed by demons it's always some kid trying to fall asleep and there's like a fire truck there everyone has a fire truck my son included weird and it just starts going off and then they're like oh no and the batteries must be going then every toy in the house starts going off and they're like oh no look all the batteries are going isn't that weird it's definitely not haunted that's my, beside the point my sister has a story like that with toys really and her husband basically yeah after her husband died there would be toys going off for no reason that were turned off that is always creepy now maybe or maybe not they were turned off but either way i mean does it they, really matter they still went off without someone pushing buttons and that's the creepy part it's like an automatic towel dispenser going off when you're nowhere near it yeah like, oh, this ghost is all about cleanliness turns out isn't that nice or was that, that really ghost? wet ghost hands was that ghost watching me the whole time yeah hell yeah and he really loves his towels way interesting correlation there that i don't want to think about okay that's pretty much all i got for you i don't know what what, what story did you enjoy what was your favorite I liked, I liked the piano in the basement just because I feel like I've it's seen that before. It's a harmless one. And yeah, that is kind of a common theme, surprisingly. But I also liked the... The choking ghost, no the doubt. The choking, and yeah. just because it was so, so weird. I know, that's definitely the only story I've ever heard that went like that. Like like you mentioned, the piano basement ghost, I've heard plenty of those. It's, it's not always a basement. Sometimes it's upstairs. Sometimes it's like, oh, we heard a party going on in the, in the living room. We went out there and nobody was there. But yeah, I've heard literally one story of someone checking out a house and being choked out by a demon thinking it was just cat allergies or something like that kicking in. And that's a doozy. And I don't know how I'd feel about that. Every time I had that feeling again where there's like a tickle in my throat, I'd be like, is there a demon choking me out right now? You know, but that's my own trauma. I'm sure that's fine. There's a hole in the bucket, dear Liza, no doubt. There's a whole space in social media that would take that story completely different. Never mind. Are we taking it in a weird direction again? Or are we, is there something? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, it turns out I don't even know what I'm talking about most of the time, but here we are. Nevertheless, we persisted, you know? I don't... That's a weird... Yes, that is a phrase you'll often find on Pinterest or Target Wall Art. And oh, now yeah. it's in Spooky Ghost Story Podcast. Isn't that fun? You're welcome. You're welcome. Meme it. Don't do that. Meme Christian. Continue to meme Christian all day. It's my uh, life. That is his life. Oh, man. What was I watching yesterday? I mentioned Beans. I think it was Fallout. I think I was the... yeah. I haven't gotten to that episode, obviously. Episode two? Well, I did. Yeah. I don't remember beans. Barv. Yeah. Remember Barv? Yeah. Just sitting there trying to eat her beans? That's true. Damn it, I'm eating my beans. Yeah. Classic get stuff, it. man. That's good stuff. But that's stuff that our YouTube audience probably doesn't really understand unless they listen to the podcast. And again, if you want more of these stories, check out episode 190 of the Freaky Deaky I'm sure I'm putting a graphic right here of some kind that you can just click on, or maybe you can just do your own uh, dirty work and open up your pod players and go to the Freaky Deaky, episode 190, for sale, not haunted, volume two. Isn't that fun? Go check that out, subscribe, and uh, be sure to share the show with your friends and family. We are doing our best to keep to the every other week schedule for Sleep With The Lights On, though sometimes in the hustle and bustle of our ordinary lives, things do get a little chaotic. Sometimes I just have to sleep with the lights off. Yeah, and that's not fine. That's not fine. Don't do that. It is fine if you don't believe in ghosts. In well, there you go. And if you don't believe in ghosts, you're in a weird spot right now. What are you doing here? Huh? Hanging out with me. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this. This feels like it's over. Anyway, we'll see you next time. And remember, friends, to sleep with the lights on for you never know what is lurking in the, the shadows. shadows. Oh, you beat me to it. I was gonna I was gonna cut you off. It's fine. That's fine. Goodbye. Be scared.